Hi, my name is Kirk Johnson. I'm president of the BMW Motorrad Club of Northern Illinois. And in this do-it-yourself video, I want to show you how to change out the shocks on your BMW uh, K1200 LT. This uh, one that's in the shop here is a 99 model, although just every other LT model is going to be very similar. It's going to be uh, just exactly the same. Um, so a little bit different on this bike, though, changing out the shocks. Uh, it's going to change out the shocks and the springs. Uh, this customer opted to go ahead and buy a very nice looking set of uh, Hyper Pro springs and shocks. Uh, and you know, it's a real shame looking at this stuff that it's just a real shame that this kind of beauty cannot be seen and appreciated on the bike once it's in there. But look, look at how nice that looks. Look at that. Just, just a gorgeous looking piece of uh, machinery here. This for the rear, it's got the adjuster on there. Uh, something else that's a little bit different on this particular build uh, that they did on this one. This is going to lower the bike by, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or an inch or something like that. It's going to be, so the bike's going to sit lower. But, so we got some other uh, engineering to do when it comes to the center stand and the side stand, things like that. So we got, that's the rear shock, obviously. And there's the, uh, the front shock right there. Front shock assembly with the nice Hyper Pro springs on there. Anyway, in order to get, in order to start this project, you have to, of course, you have to remove the covers on the bike. You got to take off the Tupperware. If you've never taken off the Tupperware before on the bike, I would definitely recommend you check out one of my other videos. One of the first videos I did that demonstrates how to take off all the Tupperware on the bike. So, take off the Tupperware. You got to expose things. You have to get over. You, you may not have to remove this, uh, the one side panel that uh, is by the grab handle. You may not have to pull that one off because there's really not a need for it on this particular job. Um, you can. I've done this job before. You can leave the gas tank in place. You just have to remove the covers that are on the handlebars. So you do that by there's there's two screws that are underneath here of different lengths. So just take a note of which one goes where. I think the longer one goes in the back position, the short one goes up toward the front. And then they, they just simply uh, come apart like a kind of a clam thing here. There's also a little bit of a slider up there, right up there in this tip. So make sure you don't break that off. So pull it backwards when you lift this up and you can see it just comes off. So we're going to have to pull off these bottom pieces as well. Now inside the mounting is inside there. You'll see where they're attached. They're just attached in two places and then this bottom plastic will fall away and then we'll be able to get the rest of this piece off. you put your key somewhere you're not going to lose it so there's the cover Okay, so the next thing you have to pull off here, they don't make it easy. You have to pull off this part right here. Uh, I can't really see that. There we go. So this part here, this rubber that's on here, goes around the, you know, around the gas tank. Uh, you got to pull this part off, the, and this framework so you can get to that that bolt. So we're going to remove that next, and. Maybe we can just pull it up. I think we just pull this and maybe lift this up. I don't remember. We don't have to remove it from the bike all the way. But we do have to remove it enough so that it's out of the way. So pull that off. Okay, I'm going to try to get the fork tubes. Once we loosen these up, you can see the bottom of the shock right here underneath this thing sitting right here. 
it's inside of this uh, A-arm. I'm going to pull the fork tubes down really hard. I don't remember, it's been a while since I did have done one of these jobs, so I can't remember if i got to remove the rear tire in order to make more room to, to be able to fully extend these fork tubes out. Also, the other thing to watch is right there is your brake line. So you may have to pull off. If you can't, when you pull these down, if you look like you're putting a lot of tension on that brake line, go ahead and dismount the brake lines from the fork tubes. There's a little uh, little hex screw back here, and there's a nut on that side. And they just pull off of the brackets, and then they're just going to hang loose. Just make sure that they're not being overly stressed, especially if you have these uh, very old antique uh, rubber tubes on there, like uh, this customer does. So... Again, we're just going to pull this. You're going to see that this part will actually fall away enough so that it will get the bottom out. Also want to take off. Go ahead and uh, before you even start loosening all this stuff up, you can go ahead and pull the, uh, the nut off that's on the top shock mount. So just go ahead and remove that one altogether. Okay, with both of them loosened up now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just see if there's enough room. I'm not going to pull real hard on these, short, on these uh, fork tubes because it's going to fall away pretty quick. Uh, you can still see pretty good what's going on there. And I'm just going to start pulling down here and just see if there's... No, uh, see, it's going to pull the... It, it's going to pull the, the brake line a little bit too hard too quick so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the brake lines so I'm gonna again just pull them off here and there it'll fall away from the bike and then I'll be able to uh, get after this a little bit better. So you're probably gonna have to pull off the ABS sensor as well so unhook it these two little uh, Torx deals there's also a couple really thin washers probably two or three thin washers behind this make sure you don't lose those so just pull that stuff away set it aside pull this off let it just hang or or stabilize it in some way so that it doesn't get all stressed out so I removed the brakes and the ABS sensor everything's just kind of hanging I wired it up up in here just find a spot to wire it up uh, I'm gonna pull off the mount as well for the little stabilizer there the steering damper so I'm going to pull this off. This steering damper is leaking really bad. So I'm going to service that while I got this thing all apart. Well, it probably has hardly any oil left in it anyway. Because uh, it looks like it's all leaked out all over the front forks. Uh, I just don't want to lose these things. So I'll put them all back together. There we go. Oh yeah, it's dead. Oh boy. Definitely dead. Okay, we'll get that out of the way. Now everything's out of the way. I'm going to be able to pull down on the forks and then lift up the shock inside there. I don't know how good I can get... If I can get a good angle on this thing. I'm just going to pull down on the, on the forks here. Lift up, pull down. Okay. There we go. Should have just enough room to get this sucker out of here. Oh, so close. There it is. German engineering. There it is. Told you. You can get it out. Didn't even have to pull off that bottom cover. 
So there's the uh, the old shack. We'll get the old one, the new one going right in. Okay, put the new one in. Just gonna fish it up through the hole there, and then set it down inside of the uh, inside of that little A arm. So, once you find the the spot at the top, goes through. There we go. Hey, look at that! Tons of room now. No problem. I think there's so much room that uh, I'm gonna have to actually hook it up on the top a little bit first just to get it to stay into place. Now the difference with this shock versus the old one, like if you're gonna just change out springs on your old shock here, you got that little hex end right in the very end of it that you gotta hook on there like with a crow's foot so that this, so it doesn't rotate. This one doesn't have that. It's actually got a big nut at the top so it's not gonna move. It's also uh, reversed as well. So it's, it's kind of an upside down shock compared to the one that you just took out. So this one, the shaft orientation is going up. The new one is it's going down. All right, we got that hooked in. So now we're gonna raise the A arm back into place, fish the uh, uh, the bolt through. Hopefully. into place right now we'll be able to put our uh, our nut back on here and start hooking things back up but first we're gonna go ahead and do the uh, the top we'll torque that down correctly okay coming back under here now we're gonna hook we're gonna torque this down to uh, 32 newton meters which uh, is it 32 no it's 40 uh, 41 I think 43 newton meters boy oh boy I'm losing it 43 newton meters or uh, 32 pounds, 32 foot pounds. So hopefully this is going to tighten, tighten up without spinning. Might be spinning. That'd be just great if it was spinning. Okay, in order to get that that bolt tight, it is going to rotate the uh, the shaft on the on the top of the shock. So take a large wrench, it doesn't even have to be one to fit that socket, but just get it in there. You can wedge it against the shock, or you can wedge it up against the uh, the nut that's on the back side of it, and it'll cause, you got to have a friend with you, or a son, or somebody to run the torque wrench at the top, but you'll be able to get it. It, it doesn't really take a, a horrendous amount of torque, just a couple of uh, you know rubber pieces that go against each other. So I was able to just wedge this up in there, wedge it against the side of the shock, and it was enough to hold it in order for him to get the uh, the torque to go ahead and do that, uh, you know, to torque it down. So now we're going to torque down the bottom side here, and then uh, start getting ready to do the rear. So. Okay, this has the exact same torque setting as the t one on the top did. So, we'll tighten this up in advance, I think. That's it. Now we're going to put our brakes back on and uh, just have everything just hang in there. Get, get all the tension off. Put the uh, ABS sensor back on. Take care of all that stuff now before you start the rear. Coming back here to the rear shock. Okay, we got this panel here removed. And here's our uh, new one. It's going to go in there, it's going to go in like that, with this, this part pointing in that direction, okay? So in order to get this out, you have a hex head bolt here, and then you've got the, uh, the bolts on the swing arm down here. Hope you can see that, there's bolts down here on the swing arm. 
So we're going to pull that stuff off. And there's also, on the back side of this, this nut, the nut that's holding in this particular bolt, uh, there is a, a little round cap on there, and I'll show that now. Down, down inside here, not this cap, but the cap underneath it, you're going to have to pull that cap off, so you got to get a screwdriver in there and pry it away. Now, there's a really good chance that you're going to lose that cap, because it's going to fall down inside somewhere where you're never going to see it again. Okay, I have my assistant holding the nut in the back. See the gas tank is still in place. And we're going to loosen this one up. You've got to be real careful so you don't lose the nut on the other side of this thing. Certainly loosening up. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, sure, it's been good. Now we're going to leave the bolt in place for right now while we loosen up the back side of this thing. The part that's on the swing arm. So in order to get that one off, I think it takes two different sizes. It takes a uh, 15 millimeter socket on one side and a 14 millimeter wrench on the other. get these out obviously there's going to be a lot of tension here with the uh, with the, the weight of the bike so we're going to use our jack stand or our jack that's underneath there and put just a little bit of pressure on the wheel go ahead and jack it up a little bit and then it, then it will uh, make this loose enough that it'll just pop out of here there it goes it always amazes me working on these bikes that well, they're such big bikes, yet they have no room at all to work. Okay, now we got to pull off the adjuster here so we can fit fish everything through. There's the old one. Pretty heavy. New one, I think this new one weighs, uh, it's got to be half the weight. So, fish our back through here. It's 
So if you're putting in a, a lowered shock, one of the, uh, the struggles you're going to have here is now with this thing in this lowered position, this cross member right here, this cross member right here is going to be in the way. So you're not going to have a straight shot at this thing in either direction. Okay, now we got to just uh, put the nut back on in the back there, torque this down to 32 pounds on the outside here, and that thing is installed. Then we get, we'll have to uh, reinstall this Our little adjuster here, put it back in the original mountings, there, there, and we'll hook this thing right there. So we're going to put the nut on the back side of this one off camera. It's going to be a pain with the gas tank still on here. If, in order to ease this job, if you wanted to remove your gas tank, you go right ahead. I'm going to do it without it. I'm going to take the extra time to suffer through putting that, that thing on because this gas tank is a pain in the rear end to get off anyway. So anyhow, that's, uh, that's where we're at. And... That's how you change your shock out. It's uh, once you get this torque down to the proper spec, go take it out for a ride. See how you like it. Uh, this one's gonna, like I said, it's gonna be a little bit more work. I'm gonna have to cut the, uh, have to modify the center stand. Gonna have to modify the side stand probably just to get this one done. But this this video really is just demonstrating on how to change out your shocks. It's really not that hard of a job. I don't know. It seems like the more I do this bike. The less and less things really are hard on it. It's just, uh, it's just time consuming. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching this, and uh, hope to see you out there riding. Also, check out our club at IllinoisBMWRiders.com. Thanks a lot.